Some of you have been asking for this, so here we go. Today, I'm going to try to simplify mech combat for you and your games. Now, in order to do that, there's several things that we need to talk about. Scale. Power points. Not what you're thinking. Mech actions. Taking damage, system failures, and repairing that damage. Starting off with scale. Mechs are very large, or at least they can be. Most mechs are considered to occupy at least a 10-foot space. Now, when this comes to your battle maps, don't worry, this is a very simple fix. You don't need to go out and buy all new products. You just simply make each square 10 feet instead of 5 feet as per usual. Most of the ranges given for mechs and their abilities, their weapons, will be divisible by 10. And the rounding down rules still apply here. Some of the larger mechs may occupy a 15-foot square space. What you need to do with this is still round down. So even though that mech is occupying a 15-foot space, according to your battle map, it will only take up one 10-foot square. And although the tech revolution does not say anything about this, this is a note that I would like to throw in for UGMs. If your players have access to a giant battle mech, one that is a little bit larger in the sense that it is maybe 15 feet, I would still allow it to move around in the open spaces, no problem. But when it starts to get into some of those tighter areas, if they are trying to do something that's a little odd, I would give them a penalty. Whereas if it was a smaller mech in that 10 foot range or that 10 foot size, I wouldn't give them a penalty for squeezing through tight buildings, for example. And one other thing that we need to get out of the way before dealing with mechs. If you have a spell or an ability that targets an object, a mech is not considered to be an object for spells and abilities that relate to this. However, feel free to disregard this at your table if it makes sense or you just want to have a little bit more fun. Now, how do you get in and out of your mech? This part is actually rather simple. To get in or out of your mech, it is a full action. As long as the mech is standing beside you, you can get inside of it with that full action. Getting out works the same way. You would just move yourself to an adjacent square next to the mech. Now in normal situations, if you're getting into an allied mech, no problem. If you're getting into a mech that is unattended or unoccupied, also not really a problem. However, this does lead us into what about Grand Theft mech? Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. Because you know a mech hijacking is going to happen in your game at some point. For you game masters, the suggested difficulty for your players if they try to do something like this, and you know they will, the DC will be 20 plus one and a half times your mech tier, rounded down. Now, mechs must be driven by at least one pilot, or at least one person. And in some cases, the larger mechs will require more than one person as a minimum. If you are trying to steal a larger mech or a larger battle suit, and it requires two people to run it, but you only have one, it's not going anywhere. Mechs also have quite a few actions that the pilots can take, and I will cover those in a minute. Now, when you take those actions, they are based on the individual character, the one that's trying to accomplish this task or trying to accomplish this feat of whatever it is. You will use that character's ranks, applicable bonuses, whatever. It's all based around the individual. But when it comes to mech combat, your initiative check is made on the slowest person in the party. Basically, whoever has the lowest initiative. Even if you do have a slow party member, mechs can still provide some base bonuses for initiative, as well as many of the other skills. If a mech is trying to lift something, the mech itself does have some stats and abilities to pick things up. Mechs can also perform skills, and the mech itself will have ranks in those various skills for whatever you're attempting. And in some cases, your pilot may just be so good at what they do, they can push the the mech beyond what it was supposed to do in situations like this the pilot can use their piloting skill instead of the mech's check rather when i say this the amount of ranks that they have in the pilot's skill you can also do the same thing for strength or dexterity based checks for your badass battle robot 
Before we get into some of the other things you can do with your mechs, if you're enjoying the video today, let me know by giving it a thumbs up, hitting that like button. That'll let me know you want more videos like this. Covering rules is not something that I've done generally too much in the past. If this does go well and you want some more rules explanations or things that you have questions about, let me know in the comments below and I will try to answer those in future videos. And then you'll have to hit subscribe with the bell so you never miss the answer to those questions. So now you've hijacked your giant battle robot. What do you do with it? Actions that a mech can take are defined by how many operators are inside of it. If there's one operator, a mech can take one action per round. And operators can take a full action in their turn to grant their mech another move action or standard action. This would also require you having two pilots if one person was doing this. The maximum number of turns that a mech can take goes up to six, even if you have eight pilots, there are still limitations to what even technology of the future can do. So regardless of how many actions your mech has, it still cannot do more than two move actions in a single turn, and you cannot activate any mech component or weapon more than once per turn. It's actually pretty close to the same rules for characters or creatures that have more than two arms. And I believe this was done more as a balancing feature than anything else, but if you decide to ignore that, that's up to you. You have your own fun at your own game tables. Now, instead of the usual five feet of movement, the mech will move its 10, but it still will not provoke an attack of opportunity. This will lead us into power points. There is a bit of a resource management system when it comes to using the mechs. Because they have their own power generation inside them, this is what is referred to as power points. These power points are the energy that's generated from each mech. And the amount that each mech can store varies from mech to mech, but obviously you want this number to be higher. Some mech abilities, weapon systems, auxiliary systems require the spending of these power points in order to function. Some will be able to function all on their own without the power points, but by spending a power point, you will gain additional effects. Aiming gives you a better chance to hit your target. It only costs one power point. Devastating hit upgrades your damage because now you're not just trying to be graceful, you're literally just trying to baseball bat whatever's in front of you for maximum power output. This one also costs three power points. Maneuver is pretty self-explanatory. It makes it easier to move this big bulky thing around. That only costs one power point. Replenish is two power points, and this one brings back some of your shields. And resistance, which costs one power point, will allow a mech to have a better saving throw. Now, some mechs can perform some special actions, one of them being called shot, and you can spend one to three power points in making specific system damage. Now, if you spend one to two points on your called shot, you can damage any system except for the power core or the cockpit, provided that damage actually does damage a system. Now, if you spend three points on that, no system is safe from you, including the power core or the cockpit. There's Hurl, not that one. Your giant battle robot can pick up stuff and just throw it. Your mech can also scan things, creatures, people, other robots. It's less effective if you use it over and over on the same thing, so you'll have to spend some power points to boost that signal, but scanning will be fairly useful. When it comes to taking damage for your giant battle mech, you will have two health pools, hit points, Shield points. The total of these two pools represents how much damage your mech can take before she done breaks. Shield points recharge, health points they do not, at least not in combat anyways. At the start of its turn, the mech will gain shield points equal to whatever the tier of the mech is. And unless you have some sort of ability or feature that allows you to have overcharged shields, normally they just tap out at whatever the limit is. Now, as you start getting into combat and your mech starts taking hits, getting the paint scratched, when you run out of shield points, much like your starships, you can start running into system damage or getting system failures. When your mech takes enough damage so that it's two thirds of its health, 
you start rolling on the table found in Tech Revolutions, page 114. You use a d20, you figure out what systems got broke. You roll on this again when you reach one third health points. Now, if you want to rally your crew and get the most out of your battle bot, then you can spend two power points to overcome system failure in the heat of the moment. And if the component is damaged real bad, then you're going to need to spend four power points to ignore it, at least until the end of the encounter. Now, when it comes to repairing your system damage or repairing your mech, please be aware this is not a simple or a cheap process. There are easy parts to fix, like system failures, because you can get new components and you can have all of your allies or your crew helping you and assisting to make things at least a little bit easier. This kind of repair does take an engineering check, and depending on how badly damaged the pieces are, the, the check goes from easier to harder, and you need at least 10 minutes to repair some of these internal subsystems. Now, if you're trying to restore your mech's health, that is much more time consuming. Your party will need to spend at least one hour and pass a difficult engineering check. If they succeed, you get to add twice your mech's tier in hit points back to your mech. And for every hit point that is restored, you must spend 10 UPBs. And what is kind of cool with this repair check, they brought in some elements from the Pathfinder critical successes or critical failures. If you beat the skill checks difficulty by more than five, you get to either reduce the time or reduce the cost of your UBPs. If you beat it by more than 10, you get to reduce the time and the money. And what happens if you fail? Well, don't do that. Now, if you fail this check and that means you missed it by four or less, you either get no repairs done or you up the cost of the UPBs by half. Now, if you miss your skill check by five or more, then just literally nothing happens. And if you need to know this, your shields do recharge out of battle, but they recharge at two points per hour. Now, if you'd like to know a little bit more about the new class, from the tech revolution, then please check out the video on your screen now. There will be an affiliate link in the pinned comment below for the tech revolution if you want to pick up a copy for yourself. Thank you to all of my patrons who have been supporting me along the way. My name's Nathaniel. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.